He's running on change. No more politics as usual. But we know in our hearts we are ready for change. But here on Chicago's South Side, in his first race for office, Barack Obama relied on old, bare-knuckle political tactics to eliminate a popular incumbent and launch his political career in the Illinois State Senate. Chicago Tribune columnist John Cass says it may not sound like the Obama way, but it is the Chicago way. And back in 1996, Obama used it to full advantage. To use lawyers, you knock out the, you know, this is not the, the, uh, the message of Barack Obama. Let everyone join in democracy and our ideas, well, the better ideas shall triumph, right? No, that was Chicago politics. Knock out your opposition challenge your petitions, destroy your enemy, right? Obama had been a grassroots organizer in this gritty neighborhood, registering thousands to vote before going off to Harvard Law School. He came back to Chicago to work as a lawyer and saw a chance to run for state senate. But in his first race for office, he made sure Democratic voters had just one choice, him. It wasn't Arnable. Right, that's what I'm saying. I want it done. Gaius Askia is no longer in politics. The race against Obama was his last. He and two other Democrats were kicked off that ballot before a single vote was cast. How? Obama sent a team of lawyers and volunteers to the Chicago Board of Elections and challenged the petitions of his opponents. You needed 757 signatures of registered voters to become a candidate. Askia said he gathered 1,899. But when the Obama team was through challenging his signatures, addresses, and voter registrations, Askia came up 69 signatures short. I fought for every signature. What it, they, was going, they was going on technicalities. If names were printed instead of written in cursive, they were kicked off, campaign workers told CNN. If signatures were good, but the person collecting the petitions wasn't properly registered, all of those signatures were kicked off. Yeah, so it's, it was technicality. Jay Stewart with Chicago's Better Government Association says there is nothing illegal about what Obama did. In fact, it's the way politics are played in Chicago. Uh, politics ain't beanbag, as they say in Chicago. Uh, you play with your elbows up, and you're pretty tough and ruthless when you have to be. Senator Obama felt that's what was necessary at the time, that's what he did. Uh, you know, it, does it fit in with the rhetoric now? Perhaps not. But Askia wasn't the incumbent. When we come back, how Barack Obama also wiped out the rest of the competition. Barack Obama was a relative unknown in 1996 when he first ran for office. To win, he had to get around the five-year incumbent, Alice Palmer. After losing a bid for Congress, Alice Palmer decided to try to keep her Senate seat. She would have been tough competition for a newcomer, but Obama planned to beat her before she ever got on the ballot. Will Burns was one of the volunteers assigned to challenge Alice Palmer's signatures. One of the first things you do whenever you're in the middle of a primary race or any race, especially in primaries in Chicago, you look at the signatures. Because uh, if you don't have the signatures to get on the ballot... Um, you save yourself a lot of time and effort from having to raise money and have a full-blown campaign effort against. And you guys successfully kept her from running. You also did your job on everybody else on that ballot. The rules are there for a reason. We have had multiple conversations with the Obama campaign about this story. In one of them, the campaign called this report a rehash. In another, they said it was a hit job. The campaign refused to give us an interview about the story, but did refer us to an Illinois state representative. Well, we called her, but she told us she didn't know much about why, when, or how Barack Obama challenged all those petitions. Well, then the campaign also directed us to a quote the senator gave the Chicago Tribune last year. To my mind, we were just abiding by the rules that had been set up, Obama told the Tribune. My conclusion was that if you couldn't run a successful petition drive, then that raised questions in terms of how effective a representative you were going to be. Hi, in that same Tribune article, Obama had this appraisal of that incumbent, Alice Palmer. I thought she was a good public servant. Alice Palmer, who is now campaigning for Hillary Clinton, told CNN she doesn't want to talk about her elimination from the ballot by Obama. I don't think he enjoyed it. It was not something that he particularly relished. Um, 
it was not something that I thought he was happy about doing. But in 1996, Alice Palmer, who along with her husband Buzz, two legendary Southside activists, learned you didn't have to be a Chicago native to play like one. Alice Palmer never ran for public office again. Drew, is, uh, is this really a big deal? I mean, you know, to those, some people would see this and say, well, look, this shows that, you know, he was playing by the rules and, and willing to play hardball. Well, I, I, it, it must be a big deal to the campaign, Anderson, based on the reaction to this story. But I think it was a big deal to the candidates at the time who, who couldn't even get on that ballot with Barack Obama. It seems to be a big deal to Senator Clinton's supporters who are now looking at uh, rules, possibly eliminating them from the competition uh, this weekend. But uh, in a bigger sense, you know, you had Mary Frances Berry on earlier in the program saying, you know, we really don't know a lot about Barack Obama, where he came from politically. And Chicago is his political roots. He still has big ties there. And he plays and has played by uh, Chicago rules. And that's how this meteoric rise took place. So more of this is part of history, his history. The 96 election, his very first, he learned to play the Chicago way, as they say, very quickly and tough. Well, we'll let viewers make up their mind. Drew, thanks.